All right, thank you everyone. Welcome to the FPGA stand-up meeting at Open Research Institute for the 21st of February, 2023. Today we'll talk about what we've done over the past week, what we have planned over the next week, if we need any resources, and if there is any sort of uh, roadblocks in our way. And, uh, and then after that, we'll share uh, news that we have and then follow up with uh, with office hours. Uh, so so go ahead, Paul, uh, go ahead and lead us off. Well, okay, my report will be very brief. Um, I have done nothing this week, uh, been concentrating on other projects. Expect to get back to uh, some opulent voice work in the coming week, uh, one way or another. And I don't know of any roadblocks, nothing new to report from the remote lab here either. Everything seems to be in order. All right, thank you. Yeah, I think we're we have some additional Plutos um, that we're we're going to use for opulent voice. So there's a little bit of of extra equipment. All right, go ahead, James. Uh, not too much report from Remote Lab South that we didn't talk about last week. Um, temporary deployment is being worked on, and more efforts being put into our more permanent structures. But other than that, not too much to report on currently. At least that wasn't covered last week. So yeah. All right, thank you. Yeah, I've elevated the the funding request and and for infrastructure development and uh, all of the wonderful things that are going on. That's going to move to the board for discussion and vote very soon. So excited about that. And they, I have not yet scheduled the delivery of the stuff that's in storage for the for the lab, um, but I do have some additional information about Remote Lab South. So for those of you who don't know, Remote Lab South is one of our laboratories, uh, and it's a, I think, by far our largest one in terms of square footage, both uh, inside and outside, and in terms of scope of, of operations. Um, and so if you uh, read our February newsletter, you know that we're going to attend and, um, and represent ourselves through the iWork uh, conference in September of 2023 which is in Little Rock, Arkansas. It's an IEEE conference that focuses on the CHIPS Act um, uh, funding distribution and, and improving uh, research and development in places in the United States that have maybe not gotten their fair share. So Arkansas would certainly qualify and that's why we spend a lot of time there. And uh, it's, uh, it's where we all, a lot of us came from. So we're, we're trying to, to give back and build. Um, and we've picked up a couple of volunteers uh, for, through the newsletter who found out about the, the remote labs so are very excited about it. And so what we'll be doing over the next week is putting everybody in touch with everybody else, uh, expediting the, the funding request for infrastructure and, and getting more things built and available for citizen science and open source work. So that's, that's the good news from, from my end about Remote Lab South. All right, so Everest, do you have the floor? Yeah. Okay. Um, is it working? Yes, you sound wonderful. Okay. Um, okay, so last week I was in holidays, but uh, the week before I succeeded in uh, uh, sending uh, well, a full duplex uh, ping uh, with Daniel uh, on the Q100 uh, with uh, DVB GSC. Um, so it's it was a great uh, good trial because uh, we can uh, we have uh, uh, met some ping and after that uh, have some connection of our HTTP. So the encapsulation of uh, DVB GSC is done on the Pluto itself, uh, um, and um, the receiver is the fork of the long mind, so with the mini tuner. So I was quite happy uh, with this uh, uh, communication and uh, it uh, validates the DVB GAC encapsulation and disencapsulation. Um, right now I rewrite the transport stream, uh, well, uh, the um, BB frame, well, uh, to encapsulate transport stream. So it's not 
uh, well, it's another thing. And um, as I just finished, I tried to uh, use the Dumi frame from the encoder, and I think that there is an issue with that. So we begin to discuss with Shioto uh, about that uh, because there is no um, there is no Dumi frame on the on the new radio block. So I think that uh, Shioto uh, uh, want to ask the Ron if there is anything he can he can done in software. Uh, to uh, compare with the FPGA implementation. That's, uh, yeah, that's uh, about uh, what I've done. And um, um, yeah, back to you. Well, thank you, that's a lot. Um, yeah, let me know how I can help, up, help with uh, follow-up or or making things happen, uh, or if there's anything that's needed. Um, I'm looking forward to to all of this working, and uh, and congratulations on all of the achievements. This is uh, it's fantastic work. Thank you. All right, Mike, you have the floor. Oh, hi there. I, I was just uh, tuning in to see what you guys are doing these days. Uh, I'm I'm in uh, I'm KT70 in Tucson, and uh, I've uh, I've been starting to get interested in, in in working with some radio astronomy work with Ca uh, Casper software and was was curious as to how how that uh, might have tied into what you guys are doing. Other than that, uh, our, the catch that the, this satellite from the U, U, U of A that was supposed to be launched this month, uh, they've stolen our rocket and uh, offered us a new one, and I, I don't think we're going to launch until the end of the summer. Oh dear. But it, <laughs> but it has a. Uh, it's, it, the good news is that it was the third launch of the rocket, and and it, there is a bit of risk in, in being an early bird. So, okay, uh, so but it's it's now, it's, it's, now it's rescheduled, fourth, right? The we're going to be on the fourth launch of the rocket. Okay, yeah, not canceled, but rescheduled. So a little bit later than than anticipated. Right, right exactly. Okay. So anyway. That, Anyway, that's the that's that's the news from Tucson, and uh, so I, I we were we were ready to ship, and and uh, now I have time on my hands, so I, I'm browsing. So hi, right. everyone. <laughs> Hello. Well, uh, it, it's never a dull moment, right? Right. Very good. Well, welcome, and thank you so much for the update. Um, yeah, plenty going on. Uh, so uh, you know. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> To, to to members of this group, uh, one thing you might be interested in is we the the downlink at X band is going to be DVBS two, uh, so that that may be of interest to some people. Yeah, very much so. We're we're looking forward to it uh, a lot. Um, yeah, thank you for the update. And well, you know, like I said, never a dull moment. All right, so we're, we're, what we're looking at doing is adding another radio card to remote labs. Uh, this is, this is uh, specifically for, uh, for, for now, for remote lab uh, West. So we have a ZCU-106 uh, Xilinx development board, and it does not have a radio card on it. Uh, the, the radio development that we've done has been on the Pluto. In the in the lab and also on the ZCU 106, which is a Xilinx 7000 series um, chip development board with an ADRV 9371 from analog devices, which is like the next generation past the the 9361, and and so bringing up a a, a second um, you know Xilinx development board plus a, a ADRV. Uh, you know, radio card is, is what we've been talking about doing in order to support a project for open source drone work. So this would be uh, targeted for, for drone communications and the particular protocol uh, that this second development station would be enabling is 
a, uh, a open source protocol um, soon to be uh, released. So rapid work to bring it up to uh, a level where it can be uh, released as a draft. Um, it is very uh, similar to LTE with some elements from 4G and 5G uh, style uh, communications in it. The it's OFDM and and pretty neat. It follows a lot of uh, things that will be familiar to to most of you listening to this uh, with the framing and and such. Uh, the the lead of this project is uh, Leonard Deguez, and he is ably assisted by a variety of of folks from all over the world. Uh, so what we're looking at doing, uh, the chip that he's most interested in for for designing a board uh, for this application, uh, so the hardware would be open source as well as the as the protocol. Uh, the board would that he's looking at is uh, the ADRV 9002 or 9002 from analog devices. And so what we're doing is. Um, a pretty careful review of, of all the available options to figure out whether this really is the right radio chip. Uh, and I know that at least one person uh, or one organization that's involved with our uh, transponder for space uh, has asked about, uh, would we consider moving to the 9002 from the 9371? So um, it, would, it would be useful in multiple ways. And so, if we if this turns out to be a successful sort of combination, uh, and it looks like it from looking at like the engineer zone and and some some activity out there uh, in the development world, uh, bringing this to open source and citizen science might be a good idea. That this combination would work. It's supported by the HDL reference design from analog devices already, so we could duplicate what we've done uh, so far on the ZC706 with the 9371, we could do the same reference design on this board set, um, which is newer. It's a, a little fresher design from analog devices. So we could duplicate the reference design, drop in our encoder, decoder, polyphase filter bank, and have a second parallel design available for, for open source work. So those are the sorts of things that we're looking at this week. And those decisions probably won't made won't be made by next week, uh, but just wanted to give everybody a heads up on what we're planning and, and looking at for remote labs, FPGA support. And uh, lots of other stuff going on too. So uh, please check your check your email um, for, uh, for list activity. And if you're on Slack, then that's where all of the detailed discussions take place. Uh, so yeah, any, um, any questions or comments or any Anything that anybody needs uh, in terms of support from ORI. We're looking forward to presenting at the QSO Today Ham Expo in March. Uh, Ribbit will present an updated presentation about their work. Uh, we're looking at having a poster session, uh, either about uh, about our, our general progress and, and also specifically with Ribbit. The next really large in-person event will be at DEF CON in August. And we'll have, a, a, we'll try very hard to have everything represented in terms of demonstrations and uh, in-person activities uh, along with uh, uh, sales. Uh, so things that will be available for, for donation for, uh, so that folks can take them home. And um, we're also moving forward with uh, four or five different uh, grant requests. And the, the feedback has been very positive so far. Uh, so we're looking forward to the results from, from all of those efforts. All right, floor is open for any discussion. Oh, just, a, just a quick question. Uh, how about the status about the ZT706 and the Incora? Uh, I see that there is, uh, you have made an issue on the analog devices uh, forum, uh, but is it related to, uh, uh, to the problem with the DMA or is it another, uh, I think that you, you, you speak about the profile, is it the same issue or not? Yeah, that's a good question. I had a, 
I expected to be able to create a profile using um, the standard methods. So there's a, 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 pro a program that you download from analog devices for free and you are able to create a profile. And this sets up all of the filters and the configuration for the chip. And this profile is then placed. You can CAD it into the file structure uh, on, uh, you know, in, in the Linux uh, build that's, that's kind of running the show. Uh, and it's just supposed to work well. It doesn't work for us, and I'm not sure why, since we're following all the directions. And so I opened an issue with analog devices uh, quite a while ago. This was right before Christmas, and it's now late February, and I did not get a reply. And so I'm kind of disappointed about that. But we, you know, we we stopped working on that and started working on the the uh, the uplink and the the middle part. Uh, like the polyphase filter bank and discussions about how to to multiplex the the traffic because so we could make progress there. So the the problem with the profile is strange to me. Um, for those that don't know, for the ninety three, you know, for for almost all of these analog chips, these these large SOCs that do um, RFS IC work. So it's the it's the radio chip in transceivers. Almost all of them. You, what you do is you have a profile and it's, it's human readable, you know, uh, it's a list of the configurations, you, you know, as a human, you can read this text file and this gets loaded in and it, it handles all of the configuration for the chip. Otherwise you would have to make a very lengthy series of calls in a uh, program programmatically in, in C uh, to, to achieve the same result. Uh, and they strongly encourage you to just use their their tool to generate a profile. And so that's what we did. Um, it didn't work. So that was weird. And I'm, I wanted to ask for help on, on this and uh, put it out on Slack and put it out on Engineer Zone. Uh, so if anybody has more experience than us and can show us what we're doing wrong, that would be great. There's a similar tool in MATLAB for the 9361. And that seems to work okay that seems to work just fine so when i do that for the 9361 which is what's on the pluto and load up the profile it takes and you can see the effects of the filtering um and and the the difference in in rates and things like that so i'm kind of stumped uh so that was one problem and the other problem is the timeouts that we we keep getting from the transmit buffer so on the 9371, what's happened is that we start to transmit, and when we actually try to transmit data that we're pulling from DMA, where the source is, uh, let's say, on an SD card, well, it times out. So it's either it cannot pull it fast enough from the SD card, even at the, at the relatively narrow bandwidth that we're using, uh, or we've got something set up wrong. So if we do what you did, and we construct a, uh, a packet, um, of like random data or zeros or whatever, if we just construct this in, in memory and try to transmit it, it works fine and, and we, can, we can transmit. But if we try to actually pull data through as DMA, then we get these timeouts. Um, so somebody with more experience than us, uh, we really need them to, to come forward and tell us what we're doing wrong because it, it, we're so close to being able to just completely control the transmit. Uh, what we'd like to do is transmit uh, a file. Um, you know, this is essentially, it's not really dummy data. It's not a dummy frame. That's not what we're doing. Uh, what we're doing is, um, you know, a known little short video file. And, and that's what we would like to accomplish. Um, and if we can't do that, then the next thing is a huge step. And that would be to, to attempt to just ship um, data from the uplink, <laughs> but that means completing the uplink and the middle part and also, and, and then delivering it to transmit. And I'm, I'm queasy about that. I'm, I'm, I'd really like to have the transmit working independently. So that's the current status for, for that particular, uh, configuration. Okay. Thanks for the clarification. Okay. So, so you, you have some issue. Uh, not depending on the encoder, which means that uh, with the, the DME size. Right. In, uh, 
Yeah, it, right. It does yeah. not depend on the encoder. The encoder is working yeah. very well. And we were able to get all the bus resizing problems fixed. So okay. that that's all that's all hooked up as far as we can tell correctly. Uh, I do not think that the encoder is the problem at all. No, it seems to be something in the uh, on the Linux side, I guess. Um, you know, the timeouts are either because we don't understand something uh, in between the memory fetch, like where it's getting it. Um, you know, I'm I'm assuming that I can read stuff off of an SD card in large enough chunks to where we can transmit it at a 10 megahertz bandwidth. Um, so if I'm wrong, I then that we need to fix that. Uh, so in some in some very constrained cases, like if we just make a fake packet and send it over and over again, then it works. But you know, sending actual data has so far failed. So we're really close. It's uh, it's not uh, every a lot of things are working, um, but it's disappointing to not see uh, you know your file show up on a transmitter. All right. Any other questions or comments or anything that anybody needs? All right. Well, we have another office hours in four hours at uh, fourteen hundred U.S. Pacific. So uh, I'll be I'll be back again, and uh, we'll open this this meeting up again next week, and we'll be on Slack and on the email list. Um, and I'd like to thank everybody for their time because it's uh, precious and irreplaceable and greatly appreciated. So, Michelle, how did you get the sun to rise over the North Pole? <laughs> I know, isn't that, isn't that cute? I like that. I like that background because uh, it doesn't occur in nature, but but it does uh, on the internet. So, <laughs> right, thanks. Thanks for inviting me. Of course. No, thank you so much for coming, and we're very much looking forward to CatSat and uh, and its success. Do you have, did you guys get a red patata? board at one point yeah i have one uh i, yeah, I one, just i just i just got one and, and, and starting to try to use it oh very good yeah so now i know who to, to ask questions of sure no happy to help i think i've made most of the major mistakes with it so uh happy to share all that i know <laughs> okay have a good day you bet all right Bye. see you all soon